comes like this, and you jab it into the outer thigh. Remember, guys, in the outer thigh, yeah, let's not go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and you keep that in for 10 seconds. And once you do that, once you do that, the needle will actually come up automatically, and a dose of adrenaline will be delivered. Um, once that happens, call 999, and you say that the person's had an anaphylaxis, and they'll come. Um, what needs to happen after that stage is you need to be monitored for your blood pressure and other things. So you probably have to spend the night in the hospital. The final thing is to lay the person down, sit them down until the ambulance comes. And so a lot of complications can happen when everyone's panicking, even the person that has just had the adrenaline gets up and panicking, and that can cause the proper fatal reactions, which is what you want to avoid too much. How do you find out if you have an allergy? Uh, there are three main ways, really. The skin prick test, the IG test, or the food challenges. Now, with a food challenge, you're going to a hospital and you actually eat the food in front of a doctor in a controlled environment. So the IG test, they will test your blood against any solutions of allergen to see if you're sensitive. But in most cases, you have a skin prick test. So what that does, and this icon here, you actually use the arm or the back, and they put solutions of allergen along them, and then you prick it with a lancet. Now you wait 15 minutes and then you actually measure how much of that has swelled and then you can see if you're sensitive to that allergen. And it doesn't mean you're automatically allergic to it, but you're, you're at a higher chance of actually having a reaction to that substance. When I went in, I had cat hair, I had lots of different pollens, lots of different nuts, and my arm blew up to about this size, and it's, it's quite itchy. Can you grow out of the food allergy? And that really depends on two things. Pretty much your age and how young you are and what type of allergy you have. So the younger you are, the more likely it is and the different types of food. So if you have a uh, milk allergy, you have 80% chance of growing out of it from an infant. If you have an egg allergy, about 50%. And if you have a fish or a peanut allergy, unfortunately less than 20% of people will grow out of that. And I guess the main question is, what does it really feel like? So those of you who've seen Crank, this might ring a bell. So basically, he's just taking an adrenaline shot. But in real life, it just uh, reverses the symptoms, so it opens those airways, and it, it makes the person more reactive to the treatment that they're about to get. And it's life-saving. You want to do it as soon as possible um, once the person's having a reaction. Delay is what we can really cause this damage and effect. So if at any time you're unsure whether you should use it, you should definitely use it. And I've also had my share of stupid questions as it goes. One, what happens if a chicken eats a nut and then lays an egg and then I have that egg? Okay. I'll... That's not a super question, Miles. I was wondering if you got it. That would be one. <laughs> Number two, what happens if I eat nuts and then breathe on you? Well, I mean, again, I, why would you breathe on me? <laughs> One of the times I went, I went to a restaurant in central London and the waiter actually asked me when I said I have a nut allergy, why did you go out to eat? And another one where I caught, felt that sort of that awful customer experience was when I went on a flight to Canada, uh, Toronto, on Air Canada, and I asked the air attendant, uh, has there got any nuts in it? And she says, I don't know, why don't you have your own food? And then the final one, can I stab you in the heart? Now, this is not what I want to happen if I ever do have a reaction. For those of you who have questions, this is probably going to kill me rather than save me. Alright, so I think the really big change was what happened when I was diagnosed with WDEIA, Weak Dependent Exercise induced Anaphylaxis, one of the longest names in history. Pretty much, if you have wheat and then you do exercise, so you can't eat wheat before, four hours before exercise or two hours afterwards, um, otherwise you're at risk of having a food reaction. At the time it's very rare, not many people have uh, come across this. Um, and at the time I was actually training for swimming, that was my main sport. I was taking maybe three to four swimming sessions a week. And this really interfered with uh, training. How I found out about it was I had constant episodes. I had to go to the hospital, have the EpiPen, go to the hospital, have the EpiPen. And so they eventually figured this out. So what they really did came from three main consequences. One, my training was shot. I didn't have the confidence to continue training. Um, the food that I'm eating is stopping me from having these dangerous reactions. Why am I continuing? What's the point? Two, I became obsessed with it. I, I, nobody knew really what this was. 
So I went on and I did further studies, I just did a master's in allergy, which is a real thing, believe it or not. And so what that was, that was learning how to do a skin prep test, that was learning how to um, do a literature study, to find out about those sort of um, reactions, um, and also about uh, asthma, um, venom allergy, that sort of thing as well. It was really for designed for doctors that have their own surgery, but because I was obsessed with my own condition, I actually got to a stage where I was able to do a dissertation and uh, literature review on that very topic, which is quite cool. Um, and restrictions, right? So once I found this out, when I went, uh, I was at six form, I was about 16 years old, the canteen staff were only prepared and comfortable enough to give me one milk for two years, which was jack of potato and cheese. Can you imagine that for two years? It was quite depressing, so uh, never give me a jacket potato, I won't be happy. <laughs> Alright, so I think what this really, this sort of restriction really, really put me in a headspace where I was like, I don't want to be restricted on anything. And so I really, I found trouble with my solace. And the first thing I did it, it gets like the advice and the worry of people that close to me was, I decided to travel to China. I went to China for a month solo and I had some problems, uh, and I was being one of them, traveling around. Food as well, okay, so they have allergies, they understand it, but hey, I'm still standing, it's possible. And since then, it's really been my passion of growing. I've been around the world, um, and before you say anything, I know Africa is pretty much empty, which I am going to do soon. And I've done some cool experiences on the way, so like in Estonia, you can do this thing, or in Bosnia, you can go there and you can drive in the Land Rover in dirt roads and with landmines. It's a uh, terrifying mission. But what is that, where does that fit in? So, with this study that I've done, with this travel that I've done, and me knowing from my personal experiences, there's not that much information out there for those that have got these, uh, these allergies and uh, they might be worried to do it themselves. So I developed uh, a website, travelingwithallergies.com, um, using the Drupal content management system. And what it does, it has blogs, it has news, and it has translations to whatever country or territory you're visiting. So if you go onto the site and go onto the country's page, and you click the US, for instance, you might find a list of um, what the labeling laws are, um, and then good restaurants where I've been, where I've been greeted with good customer service, and I shout them out. Or in the case where like the Air Canada or Preso, I shout them out and then make sure that other people don't have to experience that sort of terrible customer service which might cut them off from achieving whatever they want to they achieve. Um, at the moment it's a growing project and there's a lot more things I need to add and perhaps the next sort of stage where it goes is to become mobile friendly and to actually develop an app. But this is really my side hustle and the thing I enjoy doing when I'm not writing, which is pretty fun. Okay, and the last thing that I had in public was track training. Um, once I finished university, it had been about three years, and I hadn't really been doing any sort of sport, and I was really looking for something to get back into. Um, and then I found on Facebook that this group was doing a ski themed run. This was back in 2016, and you might recognize a few faces from, uh, from back in the days. Um, but I couldn't believe that people would actually be dressed up in ski kit to run a 10 the run. And it blew my mind. I was like, I have to come back to this. So, I mean, party runs have really been a theme for me as I've gone through it. I've probably enjoyed them the most. So, from like the carnival run, Matrix run, the festival of lights, uh, A's, themes, more carnivals. <laughs> I've been having the time of my life with this. And um, one of my favorite efforts was probably the uh, superheroes vs. supervillains where I may have found my match in uh, Laura as Mystique and I was like, okay, now we've got a challenge and to actually bring this to the next stage, to actually need one and to do a joint costume together that was probably one of the highlights that I've had uh, I just had this very far last week, which is pretty awesome um, So yeah, what I want to say is um, while I have had my challenges, it has brought me to where I am now and uh, I couldn't be more grateful with the group that I've had and you've always inspired me to do more and always reach the next stage. So the next question is, what's next? And, uh, the reference is some of those likes I do on Instagram. But um, yeah, the next step is that I've recently been offered a position in Singapore. Um, 
with my workplace. So um, Laura and I will be moving out um, in, after the new year, after, in February, I believe it is. And um, if I could be able to perhaps one day bring a little bit of joy, perhaps with midnight one or two hours, but um, it's been a blast, everyone. So I just wanted to take the time to thank you for allowing me to share my story, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations. Thank you very much. Actually, no, not for nuts, because I've never had beer, never had them. When I had the wheat thing, I was about 16, so I couldn't eat pizza, I couldn't eat bread, I couldn't eat pasta. And for my entire uni, uh, uni so three years, I couldn't have anything, it was mainly just rice, potato, that sort of thing. That's like, yeah, I, I miss pizza. Yeah. It's quite exciting, I've followed a few things, and um, I think really the issue is when someone has a very severe allergy, um, it's really that balance. Can you, can you bring that level up without causing them to go into anaphylaxis? And if you do, is that worth it? For me personally, I know the sort of foods that I have to avoid, and it doesn't impact my life personally. If someone has a, a more difficult allergy to avoid, they might want to, I'm, I'm not advocating it, but it might be more important for them to try it. But for me, nuts, um, I don't think it's worth it because the risk is too high for the world. I'm following it, I, I definitely need to know a lot more, but um, in the UK at least, um, everyone used to have an EpiPen, and recently I believe that the, um, the paper cost of that had to increase to such a level wasn't affordable for the NHS, so they switched to Emirates, which is the same thing as an adrenaline in, um, pen. Um, but we're in a position where it's quite fortunate anyone that has a uh, um, has an allergy or anaphylaxis is given one for the NHS. If you're in a different country, you're going to have to buy it, which uh, and they can be really, really expensive. So um, it's fascinating to know more about, and I'd like to know more about the medication which other people have to do. Yeah. Usually pizza, actually. Usually pizza. So margarita here in this place, pretty much. Yeah, there's a few ingredients. Um, yeah, so I might go back to basics like chips, pizzas, and definitely beer. Those are the best, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Alright, thanks everyone. Thank